For the past couple of weeks, we've been asking you to send in your economy questions, whether they be about your money or any current economic trends. And here to answer those questions for us is Dmitry Kurchevsky, Associate Professor of Economics at Elizabethtown College. Professor Kurchevsky, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we want to start with a question from Corey in Harrisburg, who wants to know why it seems like tax dollars are not being used for programs they should be. He pointed, for example, to road repairs and why we have programs to fix the roads, and yet they always still seem bad. Well, it's a tall order for several reasons. Pennsylvania has the uh, longest mile per state in terms of roads, so we have the most roads, believe it or not. And that's the reason our uh, gas tax is the highest in the nation, and that's the money that's supposed to go towards road repair, but doesn't always. So it's ultimately up to legislature. And uh, typically it's a partnership between the state and the federal uh, programs. So some of it is tied in, in the infrastructure bill that that uh, in the Senate's uh, arms on the federal level and some of it on the state level. Um, I don't know whether we're able to assess well how much the roads have been fixed as opposed to how much we want them to be fixed. I, I guess they can always do a better job, but mm. they, we sure have a lot of roads to fix to begin with. Uh, Sarah in Lancaster wants to know what effect rate hikes, for example, have on the economy. And moving forward, exactly, you know, what can we expect from them moving forward and how they would expect uh, or affect her own personal finances? So for the consumer, I think what the consumer will see is that there will be higher rates on everything from mortgages to car loans to credit cards. The Federal Reserve targets the baseline so they can target the demand side of the economy by uh, raising the interest rate. They can slow down the economic expansion and that comes at a cost of higher rates. So we will see money being more expensive, so to speak. So it's a tight money policy. And consumers will see uh, mortgage rates go up. They'll see uh, car interest uh, loans go up. But they will also see things like saving account rates going up. Uh, let's go to Vanessa from Gettysburg, who has a question about unemployment and jobs. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, there are right now 10.9 million jobs open in the U.S. and 6.5 million people unemployed. She's wondering what those 4 million or so open jobs mean for the economy. So it's a good news for job seekers. There is an abundance of jobs, so to speak. Having said that, it doesn't necessarily mean that the jobs are what the jobs people want. So there is a bit of a mismatch as the economy transitions into sort of a new normal. And the jobs people are looking for are not necessarily the vacancies that, that we see available. So you may not want uh, the jobs at the gas station or McDonald's, although there are many, many openings there. So one of the problems with the current situation is we had a lot of people leave the labor force altogether. So we have a very low unemployment number, but that doesn't count all the people who are not in the labor market, who are not looking for jobs, who simply stop looking. It could be because of childcare, it could be mm. for other reasons, but there is a good number of people essentially sitting on the sidelines. And what happens going forward pretty much depends on what fraction of that labor force will come back and will join uh, the league. Let's go to a question from William in Camp Hill, Cumberland County, who is asking what companies can do in the future to prevent more supply chain issues from happening than uh, when you consider what they're experiencing right now. So a lot of companies are rethinking their supply chains because clearly uh, the just in time, the no inventory, uh, what used to be the norm for automotive industry for many, many industries has not been working whenever there are significant stoppages along the supply chain. So as companies reconfigure this and figure out new ways to either carry inventory or to move production, uh, some companies are moving production out of China. That will take some time to shake out and it will take some time to kind of normalize. In addition to that, we have about 20% higher demand for goods and services, mostly driven by the upper fraction of the uh, income distribution. So currently our demand basically is way higher than it has been pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. And uh, that too is, is playing a role in the strain on the supply chain. Whether that eases up or not, we, we will see. 
And, and last question is from Michael in Fairview Township, York County. He is retired and he's worried that the rising inflation might mean that he won't have enough savings to last through retirement and wants to know when he can expect the recent inflation surge to decrease. So there are two uh, parts of the inflation problem. One is the increased demand that we just mentioned. The other one is the supply chain issues. The supply chain issues, I imagine, will be kind of sorted out as more and more production worldwide goes online and the the supply routes and the inventory issues are sorted out. In terms of the demand, it's not necessarily clear that it will be the situation. So some of the inflation that we see now is here to stay. No one knows how much it is here to stay. And for retirees, they're in a especially difficult situation because they don't get the advantage of uh, higher wages growth. In terms of social security recipients, they get cost of living adjustment every year. But if you have significant savings, which you plan to use during re your retirement, I think a good conversation to have with your financial advisor is where those savings are and whether they're serving the purpose you thought they'd be serving. So you may want to reallocate your portfolio and rethink where your money uh, currently is. Dmitry Krzyzewski, economics professor at Elizabethtown College. Thank you, sir, for your time. You got it. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.